And hello and welcome. Q Sports International and Predator present the Apex Wisconsin Open. Second stop of the Predator Pro Billiard Series. This is the fourth and final day in Baraboo, Wisconsin. The game is 10 ball for the $75,000 prize fund. 64 players started out with this event and we are down to the final four. This is the first semi-final match. It'll be a two out of three sets to four games, but if third set is tied, it will go to a shootout. And here we have Joshua Filler and Vitali Patsuda. They've worked their way to this point in this tournament. Joshua's playing outstanding pool and Vitali is also. We just not, I don't think we've seen him on the live stream. This is George Teche in the booth with Tim De Reuter. Good morning. Good morning, George. Joshua wins the lag, so he breaks first. He will also, if it goes to a shootout, get to go first. Well, and it's also not a coincidence that Vitaly Patsura has been finishing high lately in yes. these Pro Beard series. Obviously, because he's in the States, he has been able to play a little bit more of them, but then that doesn't mean you get to the quarterfinal or semifinal every time. So that means he's on the right path and we might see a really different match than we, yeah, in instantly would expect in this mm -hmm. match, so. Well, these two met in Las Vegas, so they they were here, and uh, Filler won the, the the World 10 ball. He, uh, he won that, but then Vitali played him, and that's gonna hang up. Well, it kind of looked like he, he miscued there or something. Like, Did it, it didn't really come off nicely off that tip. I don't know what happened there. He looked at it on the way back. Could be just me, or just the moment, like, or he dipped or something, I don't know. It looked a little strange. Well, that's not what you expect to fill her, especially w w what we've seen of Phil here. We since saw some outstanding pool. Highlight after highlight has been posted. But Vitali has, has defeated Filler once before in uh, Europe at the Treviso Euro Tour. So these guys have just a very little history. And common opponents, for instance, according to Fargo, which is a little app that I, I have privy to, uh, Filler wins almost 59% as opposed to 49% against all the people they've played. Oh, that's not a nice rub on that three ball. You can tell his heart's racing because when he was practicing, he was drawing the ball to pinpoint precision. And here he overdraws it. Look how nice it takes the English. He stroked that ball very well. Well, on the other side, with the speed for him coming into that three ball, what could have been the best thing happening to him? Like either you go, you blast it in and mm -hmm. you hope for a good outcome or yeah. you don't and you play safe on the three. Like it was a little bit in between for me. Yeah, he, he wanted to just come past the side, just a little past the side and he went uh, almost four feet past the side. He's gonna try to hit the edge, get the four or the nine into play. Nice hit. He had a quarter ball to hit and he hit it and left it pretty tough. Yeah, great shot. Worked out very, very well for him. This is, the three foul rule is in effect here. They are on a 30 second time clock. Filler has been outstanding on this table. Yeah, especially his performance last night with Alex Kazakis was just unbelievable. Yeah. We spoke to him afterwards about yes. so a couple of shots he did. Just He's like, well, you know, I practiced some of them. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I made him two out of three. So when I got the same shot in the match, I only knew like, well, I'm going to make it like 33%. I can shoot this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, do you really think like this? It was yeah, just a different no, way of approach, you know? It's, it, yeah, that's I what makes him a champion, too. Exactly, actually, uh, I remember that conversation real well, and it surprised me, because he, he said he made it like two out of five. He said, so I'm due to make it again, so I fired it. <laughs> yeah, at, at some point I gotta make it, so sure. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, that was funny. Nice shirt there, as you can see, with his own picture on the back, uh, with one of his Moscone Cup impressions. Yesterday's shirt was red and black, and this one is blue and black. Patsuda coming to the table. This is still the first game.
Going back and forth, which we haven't seen much of. Most of the games I've watched Joshua play, uh, he gets ball in hand and uh, they're off and running. He doesn't go any further than that. Oh, he caught this one too thick. He's and going to oh. be good again. Well, they're missing well. <laughs> well, he wasn't attempting to make the four, but he wasn't trying this either. Give you an example of these guys' skills. Joshua, 41. Oops. Joshua is an 841 Fargo. Patsuda is a 770 Fargo. To get to this point in the semifinals, Vitali defeated Frankie Reese. Caden Hillman, John Mora, Sam Henderson. Neither player has tasted defeat in this tournament yet. They're both undefeated. Uh, and neither player has been in a shootout. This is not too great. He's got the jump cue out. Predator air rush. A pretty good shot on that five, but when he hit that tempo, everything started to look real bad. Oh, wow. how did he go by the eight? What? Watch how he catches the point and slides in. It just doubles and slides in. He can't believe he went by the eight ball. Neither can you. Look at this. Did he jump over it? Wow, this is. <laughs> That's sick. What? That's sick. Although hitting there, he could have gone off the eight just as easy. And that jump shot to lose the opening game of the semifinal. I'm flabbergasted right here. Well, you oh. can see it, it. Oh, just because of the speed he goes into there. And then it still, it still wobbled as well, so it could easily have hung up. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's wow. called it's called new cloth. On any club table, that would have hung up, and he'd be hooked behind the eight. <laughs> Joshua plays with a predator crown cue. It's a 12-4 Revo. Of course, he has. I believe he. Yeah, he does have. The new gold rush break you? Yeah. There it is right there. A good look at the gold rush. Brand new. I don't. You said it's not available yet? Yeah, it's not. It's not released yet. Yeah, the players are uh, testing it out. I've had a lot of messages saying, hey man, I was just wondering, uh, do you know anybody that's selling that gold rush? <laughs> <laughs> like hey, any of the players want to get rid of it? Hey, they, they just got it, guys. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'm like, well, I, I would love to have one, but oh, they look great. But it's still interesting how Filler keeps breaking from the same spot to make the one in the side. As yesterday, Zakis was breaking great again from the center of the table. You know, Tim, uh, before this match started, and I was just kind of wandering around this morning, I came up to the table, and it is so worn right where they're breaking from. I would say that 90% are breaking from that area. You can really see that it's got a lot of use on the table. Most of the players are breaking from that one particular spot. They've watched each other. And they've had success from there. So I think they're all breaking from there. Well, it's also a matter of when you don't make a ball on the break, do you really sell out? Or is it still a struggle that's for the other guy to get out? And that's, I think, also a big com component of breaking from that side rail. I, I totally agree. So they're seeing something positive breaking from there. So they're all trying it. And they're all starting out there, and 
That's for the use of the, t the table's pretty worn right there. You can see it right now, right by the eight ball. Look at the, where the eight ball is. See how worn it is compared to the rest of the table. A little bit from the other side, but not like it is over there. So Patsura left Joshua a long one ball. And also pretty tough to get nice on the three unless he can take the speed off. So he's most likely to overcut the one and just bring the cue ball back up. Oh. And he's it leaked out. He, uh, Vitali can see this. Now will he play it or play safe? Based on where the three ball is, I would not expect him to go for it. That's precisely it. Yeah. I expect him to just kind of cut the one if ball over by the five and come up and use the 310. If he likes to go aggressive, he could use the six ball as a stopper though, like to take the speed off the cue ball to stay around the three. And he does just that. Well, this left is not good enough. That's an easy jump shot. Well, for filler, it's an easy jump shot. Well, nowadays on the tour, people, players are so well with the jump cue that if they yeah. don't make this jump, then they actually play the poor shot. Nowadays, the, the standard is so high, you got to make this. And the equipment is so good yeah. for this. That, that air rush is one of the best jump cues on the market. Landed right on the one ball and got perfect on the three ball. Executes the shot perfectly. Now it's to get on the four, and he's got the perfect angle to go to the four. By the uh, upper upper part of that side pocket, just like this. Absolutely perfect. And this is what we've, we've been seeing from Joshua Filler. Once he gets in line, he stays in line. And it's also a difference between the top, top pros and the little sub top just underneath is to where that safety safety Patsura played was just not a lockup. No. It was no, just, I, I, I mean, it's, it, we're not saying he played a horrible shot, but more saying against a guy like Filler, you just can't afford to play safeties like that. And, and one of the other things about playing safe at this level is you can't afford to leave the object ball in front of a pocket because these guys are good at getting to the pockets from every angle. They either kick it or jump it, but they can get there. Still a little work on that eight ball though. He's looking at going forward, two rails. Leave himself the angle straight over to probably catch the bottom side of the nine. Can go to the second diamond on this long rail. No, nope, play the one rail. Did he get an angle to go to the eight? I he don't did think not. so. No. This is. I'm quite surprised he didn't play two rails first. He started looking at it, and two rails would guarantee him to have that angle. So. I just thought he'd get enough angle to go towards the eight ball with the cue ball off the seven. If you if he can just get out of that middle corner, he could play a stop shot behind the nine to play safe. So. See, he's he got two straight here. He's not real happy with what he is, but now he's trying to figure out exactly what do I do. Patsuda taking note of what Filler's doing. As most everyone does in this game. He's looking at the clock. He's concerned about the time. Well, he does really have a special way of thinking as well around the table. Look how well he played that shot. He's, yeah. he's straight into the seven ball, but won't take it because he can't do anything with the eight. And he's not going to be the one to open it up. It's a good shot. And now kicking from the back on the seven does look really easy, but it's really easy on your regular club table. The spin doesn't grab as much as you would expect here. Still going to play it, but he's not going to catch it thick enough to leave the cue ball behind the eight and the nine and just bring the seven ball over. Oh, he goes two rails, yeah, pro just and because of the slide. So an effective safety played by Joshua Miller. It's filler. <laughs> it's Miller time. That, by the way, is my grandson's name, <laughs> Miller. <laughs> 
right there in the glasses with that cane that has all the pool balls right behind the referee is a man by the name of Bert Kinister. If you've been around pool for a long time, he has some of the best instructional videos you can find. And this riddle is solved. That's Mr. Kenister right there. And I believe that's his grandson. for game number two and win number two for Joshua. It's a race to four. It's 2-0. And as we saw him play pretty much a perfect set almost. You know, 4-0, 4-0 against was the Kiwu. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then with Kazakis, he said afterwards, he said, you know, I lost that second set. So he won the first set 4-0, good start. But then he still told himself, hey, you know, there is a chance that you might lose the second set because he obviously knows that Kazakis is also a different level. So then he lost the second set. And then I told you, I said, he just bounced back so good. Like he didn't really let the score affect him in any way. Got out of his chair, ran the first two and kind of closed the gap from yeah, there. He took over. He sure did. After losing a set, which most of the players, they break down after losing a single set because they they really want to win everything they do. Now, mentally, he's very strong. Very strong mental player. This is the first semifinal. We have one more coming up, and that will be between Tyler Steyer and Gerson Martinez Boza from Peru, an American and a Peruvian. The young man, Mr. Martinez, is playing extremely well, and Tyler Steyer took Federer Gorst apart here. Well, he didn't take him apart, but, you know, uh, played outstanding against him. Uh, and Federer was not able to get away with a couple of mistakes that he made. much on the one ball took a little risk to just create distance and we're going airborne I, I wouldn't put it past filler to be able to draw this back a little bit he's what looking at this now this is tough it's like, well he's nine feet away he doesn't, Can he still he get doesn't it back? need much no he missed the ball so it's going to get safe is he going to get behind the five? No. Left the long shot. Makes this, and it's just the right angle to get on the two. It goes by the ten, as you can see by this camera angle. Off, coming over just to hold it on the right side for the two ball. Nicely done. Well, he's in perfect line. This is coming straight back to get on the three ball. The four ball is right next to it. You slide over for that. The five ball is in the same area. And then he works his way down. I have a feeling we're going to see Mr. Patsuda on the board here very soon. Well, he needs to as well, just to loosen up a bit. And this will loosen him up. He's got a little bit straighter than yeah, he, he would did. have liked. He might play short rail, just follow straight up. Unless he can cheat the pocket a little and get over for the for the four. No, he had, he had, he had plenty. He had plenty.
both players on that shot clock. 30 seconds. They have 60 seconds after the break where they usually plan their attack of the whole rack. If there's a problem, they figure it out in those 60 seconds usually. Patsuda, sponsored by Predator, as you can see by the patch on his shirt. As is Joshua Filler. Got a little tough on this seven ball, I believe. Oh, he's got just enough angle over oh, the seven. <laughs> I looked at the table and I, I didn't see the eight. <laughs> so I thought to get to the nine, he's a little tough, but he has an angle to get to it. But the eight ball is hanging in the corner I pocket. Th I think he can get shape on the eight. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. Barely got there. Yeah, very underrated shot. When the ball is hanging in the pocket and you got to travel to the other side of the table, people always think, oh, that's easy, the ball's in the pocket. And, uh, you oh. had a hanger. Yeah. Yeah, but then you hit the, uh, the rail, uh, hit the ball into the rail, and it just kind of stopped there. It didn't run back. Practice coming out of there, folks. So this is to get Patsura on the board. Make it a match here. That's what we would want to see. Yeah. Early in the match. And he does take it, converts a win. He's down one to two. But breaking the balls, let's see where he breaks from. We've seen Joshua breaking from the right side. Trying to fire that one ball into the left side pocket as we view this table. Patsuda, after watching, more than likely will probably be breaking from the same area, but we're going to see where he decides he wants to go from. head referee cleans off the ball racks him cleans it up and says go for it he broke from the le from the left side not the right and you may consider breaking from the other side because nothing went in perfect cue ball control but most of the time when players get the perfect cue ball that's where you start to doubt like are they gonna make something usually they're so focused on getting a perfect cue ball that's to where they're not giving it their all to make a ball oh, it's not left something easy for filler could go for a one nine combo which is tough has to cut the nine could go for a safety behind the nine too yeah, two rails with inside yeah. Oh. oh, he didn't want to bump the nine. Now he's going to find himself behind that nine. Well, yes. No. Oh, will he go for the side? Yeah. He'll no, go no, for the side pocket? No, he'll make the one in the corner. I can't see the angle. I'll see the angle now. So, sometimes it's go time. I think that's it's now. Go, oh. but it's, it's go, but to the wrong place. Oh, man. You know, this was pretty straight. Didn't really have to do much again on the two. And yeah, that was a great opportunity for Petsura to level the score. So 
but we'll have to pray for a mistake somewhere by Filler. Floating around the table. Oh, you think he'll go for short rail shape here on the four where he just pointed? I think he's going to draw straight to it based on his tip position and all well, the shortest route. Mm -hmm. Just perfect cue ball there. Pinpoint. And I think there's a 6 10 combination too, so it might be early game here. This is to get on the hill and. He's been looking very determined. He's entered a couple Pro Bay Series events during the years, not all of them. And I also felt like sometimes he was looking for an excuse somewhere to lose. Like sometimes players do this to where they lose a set and mm -hmm. they go, yeah, but it's because of, or like, yeah, I don't like the shootout or like stuff like this. And then actually he doesn't really need it because he plays well enough to overcome all that. And then now this week, like if you just have seen him perform all week, he's just been like he always is, but then in this format, like he's been right on point and now he's dominating basically. Well, he has a dominating style of game, number one. He's got the talent, number two. He has yet to be involved in the shootout, so we don't know if he likes him or not yet. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I'm, I'm more saying he hasn't won one of these events yet. Yeah. And I think it might be only the reason that he's been talking his way out of it because I think we can all see that execution wise it's not going to be the reason but he's due to win one I mean he also knows that that if he starts to enter a couple more of those he, at some point he's gonna win one well he's played the one in Vegas and I think that's the only one he's played because of the world 10 ball that comes right after it I'm not sure, but I think it's going to be. Yeah, like played. I said, he, he yeah. might only play like once or twice yeah. in a year. So, yeah. Let's see what he can produce on the break. Nine ball. Well, difficult one ball considering where the two ended up. Where the two is spinning. Yeah, yeah, still, still spinning. spinning. <laughs> How did the two ball get so much English? Got the one inside trying to miss the seven. Oh, a couple bumps here and there, but don't think he got too awful on that two eight combination. Bumpy position, but effective. If he thinks he's not going to be, be able to control the two ball, like close to the short rail or anything, he could draw the cue ball out and get the two ball of the short rail back into play. Yeah, well, he has controlled that really good. Still a little straight, though. We'll have to draw back, and the minimum is to get to the center of the table. Shot on the three. Is he over the ten? It's close. And he's not guaranteed to be on the four ball as well. We'll have to play with a little bit of left spin and he's to stay away from the ten. And he's going to have to threaten that corner pocket with a cue ball. Or is he going to play the right side of the ten and going to play good speed? Yeah, that's what he did. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> I knew that that was going to be an issue because that's exactly where that cue ball was headed and that's exactly where you had to go for position on the four. Oh, well, Filler is not completely dominating in this match so far. 
does he must remember the Euro Tour in Treviso? I am quite sure he's not remembering any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and by that I mean, folks, I think it was uh, Patsuda that defeated him nine, nine to seven. But well, I, I've had so many people ask me, like, "Hey, do you remember we played in the, in this and this tournament?" And I no. go, "I play over a hundred matches a year. How am I gonna remember all of them?" <laughs> like, well, I'm so sorry, but I don't remember. And yeah, yeah. well, with with these guys, it's probably even more matches a year. So it's funny because some matches will really stand out in your in in your memory, and some you just don't even ever, ever think about them. Ooh. Will you just stop it right there for the five and take the short rail shape? Oh, center table. Maybe a little bit uh, straighter, but. Yeah, with that angle, you'll come back and play the five in the same, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking the seven ball was the four. <laughs> Tim looks at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what shot are you looking at? <laughs> well, this is like I said earlier, this is the first semifinal between Josh and Patsuda. And the second semifinal we'll have at 1 o'clock, I believe. It'll be Tyler Steyer and Gerson Martinez Boza from Peru. American versus a Peruvian. North America, South America, in fact, we have North America, South America, Germany, and Ukraine as your semifinalists. Three to two. But Sue are still trailing, but if you can get a good break, you might be in for a hill hill start of the day. Yeah, the arena. Just such a lovely setup. All Predator products. Have the Predator Apex nine foot table. Predator Arena Lights, best lights on the market for sure. Predator Arcadia Reserve Cloth. I have not heard a single player so far playing this tournament. They just came out with a new version. They're always trying to improve their product and all the players have been saying, well, they was playing good. Like they've been very happy so far so this week. So that's a good sign. And we got the Predator Arcos two balls and referee John Lee. Is wrecking the balls with the Predator Arrow Wreck. And then we have the Predator Bridges. And she will have to put a little bit more oomph in that break. Oh, well, there is your oomph. But no ball. One ball got on the point. Just got it a little bit too thick or maybe a little bit too much draw. Like there's always, if he had hit it with a little bit less spin, there's always this. Afterwards, it's easy to say he should have done this, this, this. The good sign for Patsura is he has not left an open shell on the one. But he's going to find himself behind the two in case he doesn't make this one. Filler. That yeah, was a nice two-way shot, but obviously was not trying to get that one ball in front of that corner pocket.
Suraj going airborne as well. And then sometimes you have to, you have this jump where you have no idea where you're gonna end up, but you just know that you, you have, have to, to shoot it just to, there's no other way. It's very difficult to get on that two ball, but you gotta risk it. You might get lucky and still get there. I was trying to see if there was a way he could go rail first, but I don't see it. He had to be jumping and has left a bank shot or a safety. He's got a kick shot. Going past the four. The referee checking to see if the ball throws. It looks like it is from this angle. We'll have to hit right about the middle diamond on that side rail by the nine. Oh, he hit the first time and cut the other side of the ball. I think that one ball is on. Yeah, that one ball was frozen to the rail as well, so that made it even more difficult to get the cue ball out. You might actually be happy to leave Joshua this distance. Alpha bucket needs to draw the cue ball back. Tough shot. Didn't have the full pocket there, and well, pretty good result. Yes, it is. Another kick shot. Looks like she's gonna go. Well, the two rails at this. Get the cue ball up. And another good result. Yeah, this is such a big game for Patsura. Trailing three to two is, yeah, it's not like you have no chance anymore in this set. I expect him to kick this with soft to medium speed. If he doesn't make it, then he's gonna well, have that two and a three come into play. Plus, he's kicking to open area. There's not much he can get behind. Oh, he played more speed though. Yeah. And, and oh, speaking of not much he can get behind, he found the two. Whoa. Yeah, he tapped the table. He acknowledged that he got lucky. But I would too if I end up like this every time. Not. Too difficult to hit the one, yes. but it's always a challenge to make sure you hide the object ball. It's a big ball to hit, but there's not much you can do with it. Catches it just right, you might be able to send it down, down, exactly right there, right behind those balls. Does he, can you see it? You can see it. I think he can see it and just stop the cue ball right there, right behind the ten. Yeah, and he could not have played this any better. No. This no. is 100% a lockup. The only thing I can see is going three rails. Short rail, long rail, in between the two and the eight. Short rail, hit the one, and then pray for a yeah. kind of outcome. <laughs> He's got a very small window between the five, seven. Well, he's looking at the zigzag. Can he still he's go gonna around push the, the He's going to push the 10 ball on top of the 5. Oh, well, Filler is going to like this. Nothing has been tied up. Yeah. Yeah, 
two. Get straight on the two. I think that's. Oh, he does have a little angle. I was gonna say from there, you follow a little bit on the three. You can either have the five in the side or cross over for the five in the bottom right corner. Center of the table. No. A little more angle than he wants, having gone going away from the next object ball. Nicely done. Just the right angle to either come back for the five in the opposite side or go across for the five in the corner. Either way. far on this six ball as well can use the top long rail still to get to the seven no side spin just stun maybe a hair of draw to get past the side or even play the way inside to kill the cue ball did a good job now we're just gonna lay let the ten ball hold him just went on the side there so many different ways to play that it was either way to the corner or to the side and it looks like the first set's gonna go killer fillers way unless something crazy happens on this stand ball but there's no earthquakes in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and Filler does close out the first set. Four games to two. This is two out of three sets, races to four. But if the third set is tied, it goes to a shootout. Will we see a third set? And we are back from the break. Give you a little rundown of the monies in this tournament. First place is $22,500. $22, Second place is $13,125. One, one of these two gentlemen here is going to get $6,563. The other one's going to go on. And then fifth through eighth received $3,281. And ninth through 16 got sixteen hundred forty one dollars let's see a couple shots while we are waiting for the players to get back just to show you guys if you just tuned in what you have missed so far in the first set great jump shot here you see he landed just right on the spot there to get the cue ball back and look at this pinpoint pinpoint shape on this four ball yeah that's the thing with filler he does really make it look like it's easy but those shots are not all that easy even this shot right here 
what we thought he might have to run around the table with was just a very simple soft shot. Yeah, so he's up one set and definitely will be looking for a spot in the final. He's beaten the defending champion yesterday, Alex Kazakis, who actually could smile about it afterwards because he knows that he was up for a tough challenge and he got yep. close. Well, we have one player back in the arena where there is a nine foot Predator Apex table. It's also being used, the seven foot is being used in the CSI Wisconsin State Championships. There's 56 of those seven foot tables in this room. Well, not, I'm sorry, there's 14 in this room. There's 42 up uh, second floor. And they are using the Predator Arena lights. We have sev seven, um, seven of them above this arena. And Vitali to break the balls to start the second set. Filler broke first in the first set since he won the lag. Vitali breaks second set. Lost the first one, four to two. One ball to the side pocket. No real position on the two. So we'll see a safety. Yeah, I expect him to play the opposite sides, bring the cue ball to the bottom long rail and the two ball to the other long rail. Does he like the... Uh, I don't like the cut that much. Cut the two and go all the way around the table. Oh, he tried to cut it and go around. I mean, I, I like that he tried to take his chance there, but on the other side, if he didn't make it, he was going to leave the two ball in front of the corner, which now, if Josh only is able to hit the two, he will make it guaranteed and has a chance to get on the three. Yeah, this is a good line to the pocket, too. Oh, That's too much spin. Yep. He had to uh, create the angle with English. Yeah, so it worked out for Patsura. But that really isn't where you want to leave your obje object balls in front of the pocket. Figuring out the 10-6. He's got to go between the 6 and the 8. He's not going between him. He's going above the 8. Yeah, I like how he's played that. If he went to the long rail, it could have ended up straight and really tough to get on the 4. This took a little bit more q ball control, but then it's guaranteed to be on the 4, so... Was a good shot. Guarantees are good. Uh, yeah, I think the five ball does go to the side. Yeah. The five ball does appear. Yeah. He's got an angle on this five that's going to make playing the six probably to the side pocket unless he chooses to go around. Well, 
well, he is not oh. going to be extremely happy with this. We'll have to play this six ball either really soft to be able to get the cut on the seven or yeah. play double speed and take a longer cut. Yeah, he's got a tough angle to get on the seven. Is gonna to leak. play the safe, but this is gonna leak. Yeah, yeah, that was this was not my go to shot. Could he not have banked the six ball behind the seven ten and bring the cue ball back up the table? I think he would, yeah, I think he should have kind of tried to get on the f on the on the six better, but this is a little hard. Oh no, it's perfect. Jeez, I thought that was gonna come up. That looked like it was going to fly off that side rail. Yeah, Joshua's being Joshua. Well, he might get going from here as well. Like I said yesterday, it's so interesting that he really smells fear. Like he just... The more he smells it, the more he's like... The looser oh, he gets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sweet. Nice. Like, he really gets fired up. Yeah. Not saying Patsura is, like, fearing him, but... You no, know, you're, al you're always on your toes playing a player like Filler. Because, you know, every single thing you let him go get away with can crush you the match. And again, Filler starts out the set with the first win. Winter break format. Predator sponsored player playing with Predator equipment. He's got the new Gold Rush. It has been a couple long days, so. That's also something a lot of people don't think about. It's like, oh, you're just playing pool, you know, a couple of matches a day. But it's not easy, especially the longer these events get. It's not easy to stay fresh. It's not like just hit some balls and stay in shape and that's it. Well, sometimes, you know, when it's broken down in two stages, when you get to the final 16, there's yet sometimes you play three matches in a row. And that's not easy to play three matches in a row with a, maybe a half hour break in between. Well, and knowing if you have one match where you make a couple mistakes too much that you're out. Like it's yeah. the level, the, the standard nowadays is too high to do that. So made the nine on the break, no shot on the one, unless he's going to shoot the one off the five ball into the four, which would be very aggressive. Is it the one ball he's shooting into it, or is it the cue ball? Is he going to try to get the cue ball? I'd like to go after this with the cue ball. Well, if you don't make it, going after the four ball, sell you're going to out. You're going to sell flat out. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like the one ball is frozen on the five, so if he just catches the left side the half ball, he's going to send it towards the four. I'm just, yeah, it's really tough to see. Looks like he's going to get a little low on the four. Yeah. But then again, if you look at what he did with the cue ball, he was trying to get that protection. Well, because if he makes it, the one if he makes it, the one ball goes to the side rail. If he misses it, he's got the protection you just talked yeah. about. Yeah, perfect. Well thought out shot. And also now kicking at this one. Yeah, I think you just gotta go for it. Try to catch it right in the face. Maybe make the one into the rail, into the four. Does he uh, see if he has enough room to slide in? He might just hang up. Yeah, depending on the speed. Yeah, exactly. But then, 
I'm like, that might be his only option. I don't really see much more. No, I agree. This is this is a kick shot all the way, and the ball being in front of the pocket. He's gonna be. He's gonna hit it a little bit further on the rail with draw to make it short. Called the one instead of the four, and Josh was quick to get out of his chair. Oh, the screen said foul. I don't think it was a foul. Hit that one ball first. Yeah, he's not. But about this the same same result in the end. Like it, that was ball in hand position he just gave. So I was wondering if he could get to the four. Because the carom on the four was there if he can mm -hmm. hit the inside. But then I was thinking, ah, that, that two ball might be straight on the line, so he might cut, not kick it. This is something that happens most of the time. Like sometimes, if he had called the four, he would most likely I make the, the one. <laughs> like it's, it's hit the other side of the one and made it, yeah. And that's one of the things about having to call the ball in nine ball. You don't worry about it. You just kick into it, and whichever one goes, you keep shooting. Does he have a shot here? This is awfully tight. I don't think it goes. He might be able to bank it. Well, knowing him, he might get the jump cue out. Oh. That's where he's going. But then, ag then again, the challenge. No, oh. he had the jump. He's going to jump it to break you this distance. So that means he's going to try and put some spin on it. Four seconds. Oh, <laughs> just making the ball was one and getting the cue ball out of that awkward spot with the 7, 8, 10. That was two. Well, just make a mental note when you want to jump a ball like half a ball or a quarter ball and draw back, use the jump, the break cue, not the jump cue. Yeah, he just showed that it's yeah. possible. Is the cue ball right over for the eight? Same shot for the ten. And the big two O here. Vitaly Patsura in his chair and can start worrying a little bit because things are not going his way. No, if this trend continues, the match is over at the end of the set. Our second semifinal will, will be at 1 o'clock Central Time. It will be between Tyler Steyer and Gerson Martinez. Same break coming up one to the side. Oh, the one and the eight, and look at the two ball. Well, <laughs> he's not playing ten ball, he's playing seven ball. This is why they call him killer filler with breaks like this. And what did we time him yesterday? Was it two minutes and ten seconds? Two minutes and ten seconds to run the rack. Well, let's see. He's not moving as fast as he was yesterday, not today. They'll just stop it right there for the six. Doesn't have to move the cue as much as yesterday. He might be able to break his record. 
or at least during a match in this tournament. I don't know his official record, of course, but I'm sure it's fast. Pachula may not come out of his chair after the break he just showed us. He's going to be breaking from the same place, the same way, because that was excellent results. Yeah, filler on the hill in a minute and 15 seconds. Well, a around that. Yeah, so he yeah. almost took a minute off the, the, the run there. And he wasn't even running around. <laughs> like he wasn't no, even playing no. fast. Well, he made one extra ball on the break. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. But he, yeah, I think he could go even way faster. Yeah, great stuff from the killer filler, Joshua Filler. Yeah, it will take, I feel it will take some luck and extremely high level pull to stop him today from yes. winning this tournament. That young lady right there was Pia Filler, and she is saying, don't stop him from winning this tournament. Oh, no. Bring home the check, hubby. It's quite a difference. $10,000 dif difference between first and second place, almost. 9,500, if you want to be technical. And there goes the one yeah. ball again, two oh, ball again. A look at the two. It's going to bounce, though. Well, it's not going to bounce enough. No. This, um, Only the six, the six seven. ball, yeah. Yeah, the six and seven. So let's see what he does, how he handles the six. He's looking to bank it right from there or well, move, it, move it. One of the e Well, bank it, yeah. Just to get on the bank is wow. tough. With where the eight is, you can't draw back from the four to get mm. on that great angle on the six. Well, the four is going to be gone. Is he able to cut the three, run Ooh. into the seven with a little left spin, and then pop out for the four? We'll if he can see. move the seven now and just get off the road, doesn't have to force it. Ah, it's close. He's got the angle. Does he have the angle to do it? Even uh, if he catches a double kiss, he's most likely to get away from the rail. He didn't quite get there, I don't think. Look at this shape on the four. Is it going to get by the eight? Oh, yeah. And that's just. I'm speechless a little bit. And now the same three rail shot. Does he take the combo or does he go around three rails and right at the seven to have, but he's going to take the combo. One or the other. Yeah, if he makes this, then yeah, he's a high percentage. I think this is Vitaly's only hope to come back to the table. Oh, and he's missed it by quite a bit as well. What is Vitaly Patsura capable of? Can he manage to get through this set? Side pocket. Angle leads right to it. Pocketing the six in the corner. Just goes to the rail. Low in the cue ball. Perfect. Ooh. Perfect. Can 
he's got these four balls to avoid a whitewash. And try to string some racks of his own. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to Batsura's break. Hasn't been breaking great or hasn't been making a lot of balls on the break. So if he can get that going, then he always has a chance in this set. Trying to force that third and deciding set. Fans are appreciative. They want to see more pool. Joshua Fillard in this chair, just biding his time, wanting to get back to the table and close this out. The other young man wiping down his cue, coming to the table to keep him in his chair. Coming events after this one, we have Michigan in Battle Creek, September 19th through the 24th, Ohio, October 11th through the 15th in Wilmington, Ohio, and then the Medalla Light Puerto Rico Open with the Caribbean Championships in San Juan, Puerto Rico, November 6th through the 12th. Meanwhile, let's work on this one, says Vitali. One on the point, made a two, and well, this is what I'm talking about. If he can string a couple like this. That was a good break. Good results. Surprised the one ball is down at the bottom part of the table. It usually goes to the top. But it cut the point of the side pocket and it came back down to the bottom. He landed really funny. Nice. He yeah. landed a little funny. Like he's now trying to look to go to the right side of the four, but then also he doesn't have much angle on the three to get there. We'll have to really force the cue ball over and don't get straight on the four as well. Did he create enough angle? angle? Yeah, he's got a little angle. I think he, he can go around the six, get to the center of the table. He can't get up too high, though. This isn't going to stay down. Oh, he's elevating so he can get more, create more angle. And that was nicely done. took advantage of the lack of angle and drew the ball out of there using two rails. Still some cue ball work to be done. Not a lot of room to get on the eight soon, so. Needs a good angle on the seven to come down for the eight. And it's delicate, the 10 ball could come into play.
seen that for Siskiyou ball a little bit. You think? Can you run it two rails to get on the safe ball? Well, if he looks like he might like be going short side. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say if he doesn't like getting to the center of the table because he didn't like the funny angle, then he could have played the short side. Yeah, but he, he, took the, he took the bigger angle. Yeah, it's okay yeah. here. Comfortable stroke is going to punch the cue ball to rails towards the nine. Oh yeah, this from this angle you can see the eight ball is a lot closer to the pocket than I thought it was. Mr. Patsuda looking pretty good to take this rack. He's just got to go from this nine ball to nice position on this ten. Come around three rails, possibly four. Mike gets the fourth one. One break away from tying it up. Ten ball and one break away. said we'll need another break like that but if he does get a break like that we might be in for the hill hill now Sura needs to win the set to stay alive and if if he doesn't win the match I think he can say he can be pretty proud of his <laughs> achievement so far he's played a good tournament like in Vegas play, playing two good pro period series events in a row we all know losing to this young man is a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> it does happen once in a while. A high percentage of the time. I mean, I don't think there's many players that can say, oh, I, I've beaten Filler more than he's beaten me. No. I mean, I, I'm not able to say it. <laughs> I've never played Filler. You've had some opportunities to play. I mean, you've been some of the same tournaments in Europe, haven't you? You've been some of the same tournaments he's been in, in Europe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've played him a couple times. Okay. I only managed to beat him once playing Banks. <laughs> All the other times I lost. <laughs> but from when he was young, like, we have played sets where we both just get break and running, and then I lost 8-6 or 8-7, like, just that I would ask myself can I play any better to beat this guy like just he just so when he gets going you just look at it and go is he human like that, that's really no. what you ask yourself sometimes and we saw some of that right here on this yeah. table and it's it's only something you can appreciate at some point like yeah. you look at it and go it's not going to try to make another break a run but I don't know if it's going to change the result oh yeah after a good break Okay, it did get safe, but then still, now they're going to battle again to win that fight over the two ball. Yeah, it was not an easy two ball, he shot, but you uh, would expect him to make it. We have a German and a Ukraine. Patsuda is from Ukraine, of course, Filder is from Germany. It's won a few Euro championships. Yeah, bo both of them has won yeah. a European uh, championship, yeah. yeah. Twenty-five years old with a 770 Fargo. His opponent is also 25 with an 841 Fargo. Yeah, I think if you look at Patsura and where he's from, if you look at 
the culture of playing pool. There's not many great players in, in Ukraine at all. So it's actually quite impressive how he, when he started to play, that he grew so fast. In the youth division, we both were in the same youth division. He already was a pretty good player. Like he won medals in the youth division. So for a country like Ukraine, where the standard is not extremely high, that's pretty impressive. It's easier to do in a country where you have a bunch of good players and you're just used to battling all the time. And being around good players brings your level up. Yeah. You have to give credit if credit is due. Well, and sure. Like, like you talk about practicing or playing with Niels. What better way to season yourself yeah. than practicing with a world champion? I mean, I, I consider myself being lucky to, Very. to have done Very. that. You know, And some people, they don't get the opportunity to do that. But... Opportunity is what Patsuda has given Joshua Filler here. And these six balls to close out the set. Yeah, for a spot in the final. And guaranteeing himself $13,000. It's a huge jump this match. It's kind of important I mean going home with six and a half or 13 is quite big and making the semifinals is always admirable no matter what tournament it is there are 64 players and you're down to the last four so you got to take hold your head up high regardless but he's not out yet how much hope does Patsuda have in his chair well he's praying for another opportunity but I think he knows what's about to happen well it's never over till it's over even when you're playing Joshua Filler but Two balls away from a spot in the finals. Will he face Tyler Steyer or Gerson Martinez? Yeah, that's what we're going to find out at 1.30 local time here in Wisconsin. So make sure you tune in for that match. It's going to be a great match as well. Yes. Joshua Filler advances and Vitaly Patsura will have to settle with third place in this tournament. Good shooting. This was George Teacea, myself, Tim De Ruyter. We would love to see you at 1.30, so make sure you tune in and we'll see you then. Come on back, folks.